start recording now. Okay. Um, welcome to uh, this uh, uh, lecture of uh, Society um, of Intercultural for Intercultural Philosophy today. And uh, I very warmly welcome Professor Daisuke Kamei. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Professor Kamei, for accepting the invitation to present uh, um, part of your work here uh, to us um, today. Um, I will briefly introduce uh, Professor uh, Kamei. He is a uh, professor of uh, philosophy at uh, the Department of Philosophy of Ritsumeikan uh, University in Kyoto, Japan, and uh, affiliated there to the Research Center of Intercultural uh, Phenomenology. Um, previously uh, headed by uh, Professor Tani, who um, I very warmly welcome uh, amongst us uh, as well. Uh, Professor Kamei's current research is on the formation and the development of thought of Jacques Derrida, focusing mainly on the relationship with other philosophers, which includes, on the one hand, the formation process of early Derridanian uh, deconstruction in accordance with the relationship to Edmund Husserl, and then uh, uh, secondly, the development and deepening of ethical side of early and late Derridanian philosophy, uh, particularly with reference to Emmanuel Levinas, and, uh, and third, a comprehensive and dynamic understanding of Derridanian idea with emphasis on the relationship Ship with important philosophers such as Martin Heidegger, Walter Benjamin, and Maurice Blanchot. He is uh, the author of uh, um, quite a few um, uh, uh, very important um, uh, publications, uh, amongst them books and um, and uh, and research articles. And let me just name um, two. Uh, books uh, here, one is um, a co-authored volume of phenomenology um, uh, with selected essays from Asia and the Pacific, and the other is a volume in Analekta Husayana with the title, The Problem of the Idea in Derrida's uh, Problem of Genesis. Today's talk is entitled Jack Derrida and Shizu Kuki on contingency and event. In this presentation, Professor Kamei will uh, uh, make the attempt to uh, do a comparative consideration between Japanese philosopher Shuso Kuki and the French philosopher Jacques Derrida. In the essay titled Metaphysical Time, Kuki says that I quote just once, and I think uh, um, Professor Kamei will come back to this in just a minute. The once only and infinite life is worth living. This ap ap apparently paradoxical term, that is the once only and infinite, expresses the core of the time theory of Kuki. On the other hand, Derrida uses a similar expression. He says, for example, the event, I quote, the event cannot appear to be an event when it appears unless it is already repeatable in its very uniqueness. That is, he proposes the idea of uniqueness as immediately iterable. It seems that these two formations share something in common in the fact that both have the same philosophical task to think at the, at the, time, uh, at the same time the singular uniqueness and the infinite iterability. We are very much looking forward to your um, to your considerations on these paradoxical um, expressions uh, and uh, to um, your, uh, your um, talk today. Uh, I uh, once again mentioned the title, Jacques Derrida and Shizu Kuki on contingency and event. Uh, Professor Kamei, it's your floor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Daisuke Kamei, a professor of philosophy at Ritsumeikan University in Kyoto. And as uh, Professor Nils uh, Weitman uh, tells, uh, I am a, a, a director of a research center for inter intercultural phenomenology at 
uh, Ritmeca University. And, and so uh, I am very happy and very honored to be invited to uh, your uh, Society for Intercultural uh, Philosophy. Uh, so I, I'd like to thank you so much again, once more, to Professor uh, Nils Weitemann for your very kind uh, invitation. So uh, let me uh, start my presentation. Uh, let me share my uh, screen. So, uh, <clears throat> Jack Derrida and Shuzo Kuki on contingency and event. So, my talk uh, will take about 15 or uh, 16 minutes. Uh, section one, Kuki and Derrida. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I'd like to attempt a comparative study of Japanese philosopher Shuzo Kuki and French philosopher Jacques Derrida. Kuki went to study overseas in Germany and France for eight years, during which he took courses with Husserl and Heidegger in Germany, and engaged young Sartre as a language tutor, and visited Bergson in Paris. Afterward, he returned to Japan and became a professor at Kyoto University and published several books notably the structure of Iki and the problem of contingency. Uh, Jacques Derrida, on the contrary, uh, was a philosopher who read Husserl and Heidegger uh, in his own way and published three books in 60s and 1967, Voice and Phenomenon of Grammatology and Writing and Difference. Subsequently, by developing his thinking on deconstruction, he played an active role in the intellectual world. He also had a history with Asia. For instance, he visited Japan three times in 1983, 92, and 93, and visited China in 2001. Uh, apparently, uh, there was no direct contact between these two philosophers who belong to different generations. Uh, there is also no evidence that Derrida made any reference to Kuki. Uh, however, uh, Kuki's name often appears in the fictional dialogue in Heidegger's A Dialogue on Language, included in his book On the Way to Language. Uh, Derrida reads the book repeatedly and must have noticed the name of Kuki. Uh, however, uh, Derrida did not get a chance to refer this dialogue directly, and it is uncertain whether he gave any attention to this Japanese philosopher. The first writer who has evoked, uh, evoked a thematic relationship between Kuki and Derrida appears to be the Japanese philosopher Megumi Sakabe. Sakabe distinguished a unique and somewhat radical thinking about the problem of identity and difference in Kuki's, uh, Kuki's lecture on, uh, of 1928 at Pontigny, titled The Idea of Time and the Reposition, Reposition of Time in the Orient, and suggested that the thinking of thinking on identity on and difference in Kuki should be rated as one par with that in Derrida or Deleuze. And since then, a study on the philosophy of Kuki has become developed in Japan, and his philosophy has been elucidated in various ways, but the relationship between Kuki and Derrida has not been made clear enough yet. And therefore, uh, taking up the suggestion of Sakabe, I'd like to compare uh, these two philosophers. Uh, to do so, I want to focus my attention on the following. Kuki says in an essay, uh, Metaphysical Time, 
the once only and infinite life, life is worth living. In my view, this apparently paradoxical term, the once only and infinite, uh, infinite expresses the core of Kuki's time theory. Uh, Derrida also uses a similar expression. Uh, for example, he says the event cannot appear to be an event when it appears unless it is already repeatable in its very uniqueness. That is, he proposes the idea of uniqueness as immediately iterable. It seems that these two formulations share the same philosophical task, uh, to think at the same time about singular uniqueness and infinite iterability. How then can we best bring these two philosophers' formulations together? Uh, although each has a different shades of meaning, will we find that the two correspond to one another very profoundly? I'd like to make clear the measurable proximity between the philosophy of Kuki and the thinking of Derrida. For this purpose, it is necessary to make a correlation between Kuki's contingency theory and Derrida's event theory. Kuki develops his unique contingency theory in the problem of contingency. In particular, in chapter two, titled Hypothetical Contingency, by taking up many concrete cases, he considers many contingent phenomena in our experience as events of meeting, encounter, or chance encounter. On the contrary, Derrida's work involves the motif of the event. In his late years from the 19th onward, uh, Derrida treats topics like invention, gift, hospitality, and forgiveness as events and seeks their impossible possibility. Uh, between the event of Derrida and contingency of Kuki, uh, there seems to be at least three common points. One is the unforeseeable. Uh, for Derrida, the event is that which has an eventuality, precisely what arrived in an unforeseeable way. And for Kuki, in order for a chance encounter to be contingent, it should be what happens unforeseeably, suddenly, unexpectedly, uh, accidentally. The, sec uh, the second is uh, the non-calculable. For Derrida, the event is non-calculable. Uh, that is, an event is worthy of the name to the degree that some event is possible, which as event exceeds calculation, rules, programs, anticipations, and so forth. And Kuki too asserts, uh, keeping probability theory in mind, that a contingency itself cannot be calculated because it is, uh, it is essentially characterized as escaping from being treated as an object of science. The, the uh, third point is the, the impossible. A uh, data calls the event was of the name impossible in the sense that we cannot anticipate it as, as a possibility. Kuki similarly says that the contingency is Particular, particularly the extremely little possibility or even impossibility which occurs on the surface of the reality. He thought that contingency is not a realization of a future possibility, but an encounter with the least possibility and ultimately with impossibility. Uh, as we have seen, it seems that the event theory of Derrida and the contingency theory of Kuki have similar features. In the first place, the event is, uh, Derrida, as Derrida says, to interest oneself in the experience of what happens unforeseeably, and unforeseeability conditions the very structure of the event. Then the event theory of Derrida is 
coextensive with the contingency survey itself. The ideas of Derrida that we consider are from his essay on the contingency titled My Chance uh, in French, Messons, a rendezvous with some Epicurean stereophonies. And what Derrida argues in it has clear resonance with the contingency theory of Kuki. On the basis of the proximity of their two theories, uh, I will compare the thinking of contingency in them. So uh, now I, I refer uh, the book of Shuzo Kuki, The Problem of Contingency. So uh, it is my uh, translation into English. Uh, and uh, I refer to the French translation also, The Problem to the Contingence. And as for De uh, Derrida, I quote from his book, uh, Pushke, uh, and uh, I use uh, English translation. So I go to the second uh, section, figure of falling. Uh, one of the similar features between the consideration of contingency in cookie and that in Derrida is the etymology of the words which mean contingency. There is a confirms that the French words chance and ca are derived from the Latin word cadere, which means for, for, falling. And he sees a repercussion in words like accident or ancident. Likewise, in the German words zu fall and zu fähigkeit, we can find fall. And by referring to these uh, etymologies, Delta be begins questioning why chance is a downward movement. Why a contingency represented in the figure of falling or moving downwards? And this is because uh, what falls is not seen in advance. Uh, there is no chance for uh, anticipation. This is the fundamental characteristic of the unforeseeable. Uh, for data. Uh, I quote, if uh, one anticip anticipates what is coming, which is then outlined horizontally on the horizon, and there is no pure event. So one might say uh, no horizon for the event or the encounter, only the unforeseeable and on the vertical axis. End of quote. Now we can anticipate and foresee in the arrival of an event in a horizontal perspective. In contrast, when the event falls from above beyond, beyond the horizon vertically, we cannot see the event coming. And the, the event as event as absolute surprise must fall on me, uh, Derrida says. And surprise uh, means literally captured from above. It is why uh, I cannot say the event in theoretical terms. Uh, on the contrary, in the etymology of Kuki, falling is evoked as the symbol of contingency. According to uh, Kuki, a chance comes from cadentia, hazard from cases, uh, cases, and both these originally from the Latin word cadere also, which has a structure of in a cadere, as in a stone falls on a walking person. An example he points out is uh, falls by, by chance in the truth, which is conceived as a negative contingency, that is, re recognizing the truth without the will to recognize the truth. Uh, in this way, Kuki says, uh, falling downwards is a symbolic signification for the contingency. Uh, I quote, it is by chance that an apple fell on the perspective of Newton and the bridge of Eitai was broken and it is by chance that Miyokichi fell in the boat of Chijimiya Shinsuke, Shinsuke and what excellent symbols. So I, I add, uh, Bridge of Eitai was uh, the 
very old uh, bridge in the Edo period, uh, which was uh, broken like, like this accidentally. And uh, Miyokichi and uh, Shinsuke were the other uh, uh, character appeared in Kabuki story inspired by this uh, accident. Uh, let's consider this falling more closely following a concrete case shown by Kuki. Uh, case one. Uh, for example, uh, I quote, for example, if a tile falls, tile hole falls from the roof squarely on a rubber balloon, uh, which is rolling along the house and makes it burst, then we say that this is hazard. Uh, in this case, a tile and a rubber balloon meet each other. But as Kuki says, the movement of these two things are respectively caused by a cause of some kind, subject to a certain law. I, I quote a long sentence, the tile falls by the effect of the decrepitude of the roof, which loses its fixation, and of the force of wind, which make an acceleration of sleep, or uh, all, the, all, the, all the other causes, and it falls on a certain place according to the laws of gravity. The rubber balloon, under the effect of the small initial impulse of the elasticity of rubber of the round form, form of the balloon, arrives by rolling to a certain place according to the laws of movement. In this way, the tile and the rubber balloon are both moving due to causality and thus have no contingency. However, their chance meeting is contingent. I quote, the fact that the two phenomena which have different causal series had been located in a certain positive relationship, which we call contingency, uh, end of quote. A positive relationship means the relationship other than causality. Here, uh, this relationship appeared in the positive phenomenon of the bursting of the rubber balloon caused by the falling of the tile. This uh, illustrates the encounter of two independent elements. Uh, as we consider how Derrida and Kuki respectively think about falling, we can also see the difference between them. Uh, while Delta insists on the unforeseeability of falling, Kuki sees to be looking back on the event only after it had occurred. Uh, that is, we know only after the event that contingency has occurred as the encounter of two independent elements. Furthermore, a cookie says in his essay, Emotion of Surprise and Contingency, a surprise is an emotion which occurs when faced with the contingent. And a cause of surprise is generally a complex intellectual phenomenon. In short, a surprise is born based on the intellectual recognition that considers an event as a contingency and so it is uh, belatedly produced, produced after, after, after the event. We can think as follows. Now, although the causal series of the tile and that of the balloon were independent of each other before their encounter, thereafter, a relationship between them and their respective causal series is established only by their encounter. If this is reasonable, if this is right, we can say that uh, it is contingency that the tile falls to hit the balloon because the falling of the tile is the unforeseeable event which arrives from outside of the horizon of the causal series of the balloon. And so to speak, uh, vertically, as if carving a lift in this causal series. 
Uh, let us reconsider the causal relationship by using the concept of context as Zerita does. According to Zerita, the signification of the event is determinable by its context. Uh, for example, to grasp the causal relations of something means to grasp the thing in the physical context. When a balloon is placed in one context, the contingent event is what comes from outside of this context. However, what is outside the context is not pure and simple. As simple. As Delta says, there is no outside context. Here, if we focus on the balloon, the outside of the context of the balloon is another context or causal series than that of the balloon one of which is the context of the causal, causal series, series of the falling of the tile. Uh, that is to say, uh, from the point, point of view of Derrida, uh, what is called contingency is the event in which one element within one context falls suddenly into another, another context. Uh, section 3, uh, Grinamen and Contingency. Uh, after reconsider reconsidering the case of contingency in Cookie from the point of view of Derrida, we will connect the two accounts together with reference to the thought of Epicurus as appeared in the subtitle of the, of the essay of Derrida. Whereas it is sometimes argued that Cookie refers back to the uh, Aristotelian concept of contingency, he also evokes Epicurus and his commentator Lucretius. This is another common feature between Derrida and Cookie. Let's look back at the atomism of ancient Greek. Democritus thinks that an atom which cannot be divided anymore, should be the ultimate element of things. The world consists of the atom and the emptiness, and atoms combine together uh, through mutual clashes together in, in order to form materials. Democritus stands in a position of determinism, which argues that the direction and speed of the movement of each atom as a cause of grass is already determined, that is, it has a, a necessity. Uh, Epicurus inherited atomism from Democritus and made a modification to it. According to On the Nature of Things of Epicurus, which explains the uh, atomism of Democritus, Epicurus thought that when some atoms received a suburb a change of course, an inclination, uh, that is kriname, without course, a composition is established by their crash. As one researcher says, the mechanical view of nature is a determinism, a determinism in which the movement condition of preceding atoms determines the movement conditions of following atoms, and thus a future phenomenon is also determined by the movement condition of the atoms. In contrast, the atomism of Epicurus is an indeterminism in the sense that the movement of atom, atoms at a certain point of time does not determine univocally a future movement condition of atoms due to the swerve which happens indeterminately. indeterminately. Uh, in this way, the atomism that started with Democritus, although inverted from determinism to indeterminism, becomes a principle of the theory of contingency when Epicurus inherits and recasts it. In his section on uh, causal negative contingency, uh, by presenting a genealogy of Democritus, Epicurus, and Lucretius, Cookie says, the uh, determinism of the atomism of the Magritus and the thought of Ukrinamen in Epicurus and Lucretius oppositely. 
And then he summarizes as fell as flow. I quote uh, the crucial point in the alternative of determinism or of indeterminism relative, relative to causality is whether to admit infinitesimal uh, in indeterminacy, in indeterminacy, uh, in determinism, or infinitesimal uh, determinacy in indeterminism. The problem converges on the one point, infinitesimal, uh, which Lucretius says. End of quote. Uh, however, he avoids any, any prompt decision on this problem. Thus, the concept of Klinamen disappears from Cookie's text uh, without being positively used it. Uh, by contrast, uh, Derrida interprets a Klinamen in his own way. He says in a trialogue with uh, Japanese intellectuals, I quote, uh, in fact, uh, I am trying to art articulate the thinking of deconstruction with the thinking of Klinamen. And that is, I am trying to grasp the thinking of Klinamen not in an atomistic context, but in a gap from this. It is to rethink a problem of chance or contingency based on uh, divisibility, uh, not on the uh, indivisibility of atoms. End of quote. Uh, what, does, uh, what does this mean? In the first place, it means that the atomism, which proposes the presence of an indivisible atom, indivisible atom, is a doctrine was it to be deconstructed. Uh, for Derrida, the concept of atom also should be thought as that which consists of difference. In other words, we have to think of a paradoxical concept of divisible, not an indivisible atom. Uh, a divisible atom. And that is, as Derrida says in a dialogue, dialogue with his Japanese friend, Koichi Toyosaki, it is necessary to think at the same time of divisib divisibleness and uniqueness. For Derrida, a cleaner man becomes what shakes or deconstructs, so to speak, the concept of the atom itself inside of the atomism. Uh, that is to say, uh, Derrida argues that Klinamen means the, that an atom, which is defined by its indivisibility, could nevertheless also be divisible. I quote, the divisibility or internal difference of the so-called ultimate element, element. This is a Klinamen interpreted by Derrida, who calls it a diversion of atomism, if not one of an um, anti-atomism. For Derrida, a Klinamen is then uh, equivalent, equ equivalent to the concept of dif difference, difference uh, which is operating within atomism. Uh, if we uh, read a if we read again the text of Cookie from this point of view of Derrida's, we will be able to say again the encounter of two independent elements as an event of Klinamen. And to do so, let us consider once more the case of the meeting of the tile and the balloon presented previously from, from an atomistic point of view and find a Klinamen in it. Uh, from, a, from an atomistic viewpoint, each of the two causal theories involved here, uh, that is the movement of tile, the tile and that of the balloon, remain within or near the thought of Democritus, in that the movement of the tile, as well as the movement of the balloon, can be considered to be determined by a certain cause to a certain degree. Uh, both movements are comprehensible according to the ex exigencies of, um, of a cause-effect relationship at the physical level. In contrast, we should not explain the encounter of the, of the two theories 
in the terms of Democritus, because if we suppose that this encounter is determined in advance, we could not call it contingent. Uh, let us introduce here the thought of Epicurus. Uh, that is, let us suppose that the clutch of the tire and the balloon is caused by their respective swerve or inclination. Uh, that is, uh, in the elements uh, constituting the causal series of the tire and the balloon, there can be some swerve or inclination which is not determined in advance and is without cause. Uh, in this case, one point in the falling orbit of the tire comes into contact with that of a rolling balloon by its swerve. Uh, it is what constitutes the contingency of the event of the crash of the tire and the balloon. And we will think in this way uh, if we understand and the positive causal contingency in the way of Epicurus. Uh, section four, uh, divisibility of uh, proper names. Uh, this difference around atomism between Kuki and Derrida will become clear when we compare the thinking on the proper name. Uh, next, we would like to consider a shared opinion and difference between both concerning uh, the contingency in the sense of coincidence of names. Uh, it will be very important for us to associate Derrida with Kuki more closely. Uh, Kuki's consideration of the contingency of names is provided mainly in the section on rational positive contingency. One aspect of this uh, con consideration is to see a positive relationship in the fact that uh, stroke counts of different kanji in different names are the same. So this is the second case, uh, I quote, uh, thus uh, personal names uh, in uh, Japanese names, Yukio, Hisayoshi, Sadasuke, Takeo, Senji, uh, it is written like this, like this uh, kanji, by kanji, are uh, having the minimal logical relation among them, have so-called terrier characteristics, uh, consisting in the number 18 of all, all of the stroke points, uh, constructing a contingent relationship, and founding a basis for onomancy which tells a person for person's fortune from his name. Now, first, uh, there is a long, uh, logical relationship between a name and its signification. The coincidence of both stroke counts uh, is contingent. Uh, likewise, uh, Cookie finds rational positive contingency also in homonyms, for, for example, the phonem phonemic is identity of hachi. Hachi uh, in, Japanese, in Japanese, hachi means uh, ball B8 uh, or senkou, which means a uh, stick of incense choice, uh, one's academic major uh, by the different, uh, by different kanji. Uh, this attitude of cookies, uh, which sees contingency in stroke counts and phoneme, phonemes, is very near to the characteristic, characteristics of the thinking of Derrida. Uh, if uh, Derrida could have read such cases, he would have been very interested in them. Uh, for he gives an example of mixing uh, these two cases. Uh, homophonic proper name and common noun. He takes up the French word uh, Pierre, which is the same in phoneme and can be either a proper name or a common noun, which means uh, a stone. Uh, Pierre as a proper name in indicates one person only after being placed in a certain senten sentence, uh, that is, uh, in a certain context. I quote from Derrida, uh, it has no meaning by itself, at least as a proper name. 
it does not refer, refer to anyone. It designates someone only in a given context, for example, by reason of an arbitrary convention, uh, end of quote. Uh, this does not mean that the meaning of a word, a word is decided univocally by its context. The word should be repeatable in the other context. And so uh, paradoxically, uh, I quote, in order to be a mark and to mark its marking effect, a mark must be able to be identified, recognized as the same, be precisely remarkable uh, from one context to another, uh, end of quote. One word has a meaning in a particular st st stable context, but at the same time, that, that one word can always be removed and repeated in another context uh, with a different meaning. Uh, I quote, uh, I quote, this iterability is thus what causes a mark to be valid more than once. It is more than once. It uh, multiplies multiply and divides itself in, internally. And this imprints a power of diversion on its very movement. It is in the destina destination, a principle of in indetermination, indetermination, a chance, a randomness, or destinering. End of quote. Uh, if so, the proper name is not indivisible, but uh, divisible among plural contexts, and it cannot function as a proper name without this possibility of division and iteration. According to Derrida, uh, this, is, this is the uh, principle of the contingency of the proper name. Uh, let, us, <clears throat> let us compare this source of Derrida's with an argument of cookies. Cookie regards as contingency uh, what we feel when we meet a person who has the same name as and the encounter of two independent elements, the chance encounter between two persons connected by a, by a name. Uh, however, uh, for Derrida, uh, this is a case of a division of one name into two people. Uh, we will apply this comparison to an example of coincidence of name, which Cookie takes up. Now, uh, case three. Uh, <clears throat> According to a newspaper, a movie star Isuzu Yamada, is, uh, who visited an uh, invincible battle cruiser Isuzu, led by a uh, Captain Yamada, received hospital treatment. The topic of the newspaper, uh, newspaper article is uh, this strange coincidence of the movie star Isuzu Yamada and Yamada, the captain of the Isuzu. And Kuki says here the final positive contingency. Uh, I quote from Kuki. And here the motive of assignment of Captain Yamada to the cruiser Isuzu does not aim at the association of the two names of Yamada and Isuzu. However, uh, through the association of these two names, names appears a homonymy with Yamada Isuzu, uh, which is entirely the effect of a final contingency, but has a remarkable finality without end. Uh, end of quote. Uh, if data could, re uh, could re read this discussion of cookies, he would say that uh, one proper name, which means a movie star in one context, moves to another context and is divided into a, pro into a proper name, uh, which is the mixing of the name of the invis invincible battle cruiser and its captain. Uh, that is, uh, in this case, one proper name is iterated and divided between two contexts. Uh, let us see one more example from the newspaper uh, considered by Cookie. Uh, case four, a, a car uh, whose, num whose uh, plate number was 1564 
had run over a man. So the driver, uh, turning pale with fear, submitted a change, change of his license plate number. Uh, Cookie interprets this as a complex case of two kinds of contingency. Uh, I quote, uh, in Japanese, uh, between 1564, one, one, so it is uh, said like this, uh, also like this, he, hito, hito goroshi, and a murder, uh, which uh, is uh, hito goroshi in Japanese, uh, rational, the same uh, no, phoneme, the same, uh, no, same phoneme. Uh, rational positive contingency is established by phonetic relation. Here, uh, the fact that a car, which has a such very uh, unbelievable number, accidentally run, run over a man, is the final positive contingency. End of quote. Uh, if, we, if we explain this in the Deridian way, the numeral 1564 has no meaning. However, it become a meaningful, num meaningful numeral in cookie when we know it has the same phoneme as murder, hitogoroshi in Japanese, and uh, becomes an evil number when shown on the license plate of a car which brought about an accident resulting in death. In this case, the same mark, uh, 1564, is iterated and happened to be given another meaning by transition of context. Uh, section uh, five, the last section, uh, repetition and present. Uh, here are two, uh, we have we have tried to re reconsider the encounter of two independent elements, a definition of contingency by Cookie, uh, from the viewpoint of Derrida. And this comparison makes clear uh, the differences between their views of the event of contingency. And that is uh, contingency as far Cookie means, for Derrida, the iteration and division of one element from one context to another context. And so the event of contingency means for Derrida, an event which contains iteration and division, or which has iterability and divisibility through unique and occurring only once. Uh, based on this, finally, I'd like to approach the problem of singular uniqueness and infinite uh, iterability, uh, which seems to be a common task for both philosophers as we have seen before. A cookie treat repeated arrivals of the same names as seen before, or the case when the same contingency is repeated several times with the same content as uh, cases of successive contingency. Uh, this problem of repeti repetition of contingency leads to a problem of rhyme in his treat treat treatise on literature and to a problem of time. Cookie says in his famous essay, I quote, uh, once I tried to express the birth of contingency by creating, creating a chain made of the sound su, as when I called it a disjunction, the speed of change sliding and slipping through toward reality. Uh, in Japanese, genjitsue, genjitsue su, sururi to su, bette, eh, kuru, su, sui no uh, su, pido. Uh, there are many uh, su. Uh, such a repetition of phoneme is also, also a fa favorite tactic for Derrida. In a phrase on a letter addressed to a woman in his book, Postcard, the sound uh, tru is repeated which reminds us of the sound of a typewriter. I quote in, in French, uh, 
Uh, this uh, repetition of sound is effective because the first sound is connected to the second sound and then to the third sound, and it continues again and again. A present uh, in which we hear the sound of su, for, for instance, contains past su, many su, uh, many su. And one su uh, does not have meaning if it is alone. However, a data thinking on this repetition of sounds is different from cookies. And uh, this difference reflects the difference in their thoughts on uniqueness and repetition. Uh, Cookie, uh, for his part, would call this repetition of sounds matter of a uh, qual qualitative time in contrast to, to quantitative time. A flux and a duration characterized by a heterogeneity and mutual penetration with reference to Bergson. Rhyme are possible because one variety of qualitative time time enters into and qualitative time enters into and permits another variety. A cookie regards the repetition of rhythm or phoneme in poetry as the eternal repetition of the present and says that the unlimited repetition of the present means that the present possesses the depth of eternity. And this eternal present is cookie's own concept of time as a circle returning of the strict identical now, which is a this, this, continu this continuous, connected only at a distance, uh, reversible, and vertically overlapping. As he says, uh, each instant, each present is an identical moment of different times. Uh, by contrast, Derrida would explain this by iterability and divisibility of marks, as we have seen. Iterability means the uh, constitution of an identical present by repetition of marks, uh, for example, the sound su. Uh, however, at the same time, this constitution divides the present and the movement of marks which constitutes and divides the present is called difference. The movement of difference shakes the concept of time consisting of past, present, and future and installs a relationship with a past which has never been present and with a future uh, which will never become a present, but will remain a trace in the heart of the present. When we, uh, when we characterize both thinkers in this way, we can clarify their thoughts on time as follows. As a common feature, uh, Cookie and Derrida try to propose another temporality different from the ordinary, ordinary concept of time, consisting of a present, which is synthesized with a past and a future. Uh, for Cookie, an uh, ecstatic unity of an ordinary time, which consists of three modes, present, past, future, is horizontal uh, ecstasy in which each constituent element is con continuous and irreversible. In contrast, the cyclic time, which Cookie poses as opposed to ordinary time, is a time of vertical ecstasy, in which each of the constituent element has discontinuity, identical homogeneity, and reversibility. This return of uh, absolutely identical time brings a uh, stra stratified eternal profoundness. According to Cookie, uh, it is the crossing of these horizontal and vertical times that constitutes time as such. I quote, the intersection of these planes is nothing other than the special, special structure of time in its two faces, the one real and the, the other imaginary, uh, end of quote. Uh, in, contra in contrast to this time theory, uh, there is a thought on time 
can be called a deconstruction of the ordinary concept of time. In voice and phenomenon, data attempts to shake a metaphysical concept of time as a movement conceived in terms of the present by arguing instead for a time to be conceived anew, anew on the basis now of difference within auto-affection. And this is nothing other than a de deconsideration of the present, which seems to be the most ordinary concept in phenomenology by the possibility of repetition in its most general form or the possibility of a return ad infinitum. Uh, it introduces a difference and trace in the presence of the present. A time reconsidered in this way is called also a time conceived on the basis of identity of identity, sorry, uh, of identity of identity and non-identity. And thus, uh, where the cyclic time of cookie uh, involves the return of an absolutely identical time, the returning time as reconsidered by Derrida is a time inseparable from its non-identity, that is, its otherness. However, both ways of thinking have something in common in that both are attempts to think two apparently in incompatible things that is uniqueness and repetitiousness, repetitiousness. This as the same. For example, Cookie says life is once only, but is also an infinite repetition in the following formulation. I quote, a lifetime is repeated indefinitely with strictly, strictly identical content which is ultimately the same as that a lifetime can be lived, lived only uh, once only. End of quote. The two things mentioned here, infinite repetition and once only, seem to be a paradox, but the eternal present of Kuki is precisely the concept which makes possible the compatibility of these paradoxical things. Uh, as for there is a difference, uh, it means the identity of identity and non-identity, as Derrida himself says, and uh, that seems to seems also paradoxical because identity and non-identity are no, not logically identical. However, a difference uh, expresses not an atemporal logicality, but a movement which makes possible and radically shakes the identity and giving rise to what can be called the originary coexistence of the same and the other. In uh, Cookie's once only life, uh, or, uh, Cookie's once only and infinitely repetitive, repetitive life, uniqueness is repeatable in an infinite succession. However, this means that a only once only life is the same life in that it is infinitely repeatable. And this is the best possible affirmation of the once only life as it were. Conversely, there is an infinitely iterable and divisible uniqueness means that uniqueness is thinkable only in iterability. Uniqueness is infinitely divisible and open to the other. Uh, such, an, such an iterability is a condition of the unique. Uh, in this way, the thought of Derrida and that of Cookie seem, uh, though aiming in somewhat different directions, to be getting closer and closer to each other. At uh, another conference at uh, Pontigny, uh, titled The Expression of the uh, Infinite in Japanese Art, Kuki spoke of repeti repetitive time in the following way. I quote, uh, it is also the moment of which uh, we are exp 
experiencing here at this hall at Pontigny, where I am speaking to you of a poem of Semimaru, and where we ask ourselves if we have already lived this same moment together, and if we are going to relive it together a second time, if we have already known each other an indefinite number of times, and if we are going to know each other again. End of quote. The I <clears throat> uh, who speaks this, uh, that is Cookie, lives his own, uh, lives his own once only life but by chance uh, happens to ask himself whether he had ever lived this same moment indefinitely repeating. And the moment when this question arrives by chance is nothing other than the moment when the one's only life opens in features and opens to the other. Derrida would call this arrival of the question the event. A persistent effort to thinking is needed to respond to this question, uh, which is what Cookie and Derrida accomplished in common beyond their difference of directions. Yeah, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much um, for this. Uh, I stopped the.